Okay, so I'll swap cameras now, so this might be a bit shaky because this doesn't have anti shutter shake built into it. Uh, so now in Boom, where they've got all these weird, horrible, well, I don't like them anyway, Boom trikes. I mean, I must say, I do think they're pretty horrible things, but if you like it, you like it. And look at that bloody thing there. Well, here, look, there's some interesting customs, which is always nice to see. So let's go and look at them. So custom just out. Oh, so back end. <laughs> Hope this is uh, in focus because this thing, as I say, doesn't focus. <laughs> Yeah, he's on the side, he's on the fist. <laughs> <laughs> Again. And it's the middle of the day. I think he's a disgrace. What have you seen? Right, mate. Okay, we've got a drag bike here. Big Boar GSX 1100EFE. what times it does. Let's have a look if it tells me. Yeah, no, it doesn't tell me. It's more like it. A turboed katana with a Jixa engine in it. Back in the day I had a few katanas, but it wouldn't like that. So one of my favourite Japanese bikes of all time. One reason is the running position is superb, you sort of sit in the bike, that little fairing at the front there works really well on the motorway, you've got a big tank, and it's a big, big solid stable bike, a bit heavy of course, but uh, yeah, made a great kind of high speed motorway bike. This one though is uh, in turboed, lots of one offs on it, upside down forks, different wheels, pretty big turbo, extended swing arm, extended swing arm. Ghost flames as well. Not too bad. Strange though, it's got these big wide bars on it. You would have thought you'd have something a bit more sort of racer-ish. Oh well. Well, in comparison, we have a standard version. Standard engine, standard wheels, standard paint job. Looks like it might have been restored, but I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Yeah, 81. The same age as mine. Um, with those fantastic sort of weird looking clocks that go around in opposite directions. Yeah. Just quite rare, he's got the original black chrome exhaust pistons because they're really rare. He may have actually had, so this bike may have come from America, I don't know, because in Britain those parts wouldn't have lasted long on the salty roads. And there's the original anti dive from the end, which kind of worked but not very well. And then in the background there, we've got another tuned version. Let's look, look at that one. This looks like a racing bike, or at least it sounds like it's a racing bike, or it appears to be one. Uh, what we've got here, rear sets. It's been monoshocked, of course. Quite a common thing to do these days with these uh, old frames. It's got a outrigger support for the gearbox sprocket. These usual upside down forks, the Kikos. Quite well done. Can't say I like the pink scheme very well, but uh, each their own. The race back there. The speedo. We have another turbo. Another, this time a Bandit 1200 engine turbo, but with an EFE chassis. And actually, I've seen this bike before. I think it was at the um, Stafford Show a couple of years ago. So, I guess it gets around. Again, extended swing arm, three spokers, them shots are a bit rubbish, but anyway. Should be a interesting bike. An 84 GS section with a Bandit engine turbo. Hopefully this is in focus because I can't see at the moment very well. It's a bit too dark in here. But next to it is something a bit more interesting. A Magnum framed, a Harris Magnum framed, or rather a Harris F1 framed, Suzuki. Yeah, that's a, looks like a pre-Magnum frame, but it still had the swing shots. 
from the uh, late 70s, early 80s. A friend of mine on one of these, but it had a Kawasaki engine in it. I must say it did look pretty damn cool. But yes, these trains were originally built for racing purposes, endurance racing and uh, track racing, whatever. Because originally, of course, Japanese trains weren't that good. Um, and I think this is the F1 version. I could be wrong. Let's have a look if I can see a description of it somewhere. It's certainly pre-Magnum, because Magnums were monoshocked. Um, very well done. It actually looks like the frame's been uh, clear-coated. It's not been painted, it's been clear-coated, so you can see the welding on it. Or the uh, fuzzy bronze welding, anyway. Or bracing, or brazing, whatever it is. Yeah, so... Again, I think this is a genuine... Yeah, so, it's a pretty nice bike. Okay, so now just a row of old bikes, old classic bikes. Although I wouldn't call a CB750 classic bike. I mean, I know it is, but I don't think it's particularly special. Got Triumph. Um, I'm not sure why these are all lined up. An old Bantam. A tricked out RD350 and a tricked out, polished up GT750. Yeah, whatever. So I'm not quite sure why they're all here. Okay, it's Marshalls Northwest. I guess these are the folks who marshal at uh, events like the TT. Local race tracks like Alton Park and so on. And here's a classic gold drag bike, spring bike. There's a classic gold spring bike. Yeah. Bottom tail spring. I want to race there, but it wouldn't let me because my engine's too big for my uh, Harley swines. Yeah, so actually that's uh, in about a month's time. I'm not sure I can make that. And in fact, last year I wanted to race there, but they wouldn't let me because they said my Harley engine was too big. They've got a limit of 12 in CC. Which is stupid because my bike makes less power than a, a modern kind of 1000cc jet bike. But anyway, rules is rules, and that's that. Okay, moving on then. A bit of some safety stuff. Should have smashed a bike. And a police stick it up, new Super Sport SS uh, Ducati. And look over here, we have the enemy, as it were. No, they're not really. You get told now for speeding around. And in the back of this uh, police car, you've got some videos showing all the stupid things that car drivers do and bike drivers do. But we know about that, so we'll move on. On the SS50, we live in a lost youth that I never had because I never could afford a, a moped when I was 16. Uh, it's for sale, a mere £4,000. That's, that's not what it was, it's getting quite expensive. Actually, interestingly enough, nearby, We've got some kind of Chinese bikes pretending to be uh, old British mates, an AJS, that's, that's to the Chinese I think. And it's got a Cine, I guess that's also Chinese. And over there we've got another one. And uh, yeah, quite a few years around, MASH. Uh, so, oh, and here we have an old 90cc scrambler from what, the early 70s I guess. Quite nice, but I would hate to think how much somebody wants, wants for that. Okay, moving on then. Now here we are at the KTM stand. I must say I'm not, not really able to stand KTMs. I know they're supposed to be really good uh, fun bikes, but the colour schemes, the general look of them doesn't really appeal to me. I know my mate Tim, he's uh, into KTMs. He's got a big Super Duke or whatever it is, all painted up and tuned up as his main sort of touring bike, but not for me. Let's see what we've got here then. Oh, no. You! What are you doing here? You alright? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, here's central wheels, where I get my bits from. At the moment I don't need any more, so uh, my wallet is safe. But they do make some cool stuff. Rims, stainless steel spokes, even brass nickel plated um, nipples. <coughs> See, plenty of cool stuff here. And in fact, I should pick up a leaflet for my mate Lister because he's uh, looking at rebuilding the wheels of his new Sportster. And also, what you said. Okay, just picked up this uh, booklet from Central Wheels with the prices inside, which is handy. I think my mate Lister will um, have that because he's looking to rebuild his wheels on his future project, Sportster. So, uh, yeah, all good. Okay, well, since I'm here and this is uh, free at the moment, I'm going to try it out for size. A bit tricky because I'm holding the camera at the same time. But uh, yeah, it's 8.8. Eight. This is the uh, Street Cup. Little bearing on it. Nano CC. Okay, first impressions are. Tank's very slim. Bars aren't exactly 
flip ons are quite high up, pegs are not particularly far back, but my heel, my calf's hitting this exhaust system. So even with a cover on it, protector, I think it might get quite warm. Particularly if you're putting your feet on the, well rather than if you put your balls of your feet on the uh, pegs, so that's not ideal. I think it could do with a different lower exhaust system and some lower bars as well. But yeah, overall, great grand, eight and a half grand. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, so it's a two-stroke club, and sure enough, it's full of two strokes like this. One off GT750 powered alloy framed thing. Not sure who made that frame, looks like maybe a uh, Martech, maybe, Spondon, you know, just to say. Oh, what else we got here? Uh, oh, 500V. Ah, another two stroke, this time a tweaked out RD350. Upside down forks, six pot Tokikos, pedal brakes, blinged up engine with an awful lot of kit on it, I think. Lock up clutch. I'm not sure what's going on with that barrel, that top end barrel, but obviously not standard whatsoever. And uh, some TSA pipes. And this is actually a, what started out life as an 83 Yamaha RD 350. Pretty well done, not overly done like some of them are. So yeah, I quite like that, even though I don't like two strokes. It's a very early bike, this is a 73 Fizzy. Now getting quite expensive. Looks like it's been restored quite well. Here we have another RD, this time a 250LC. I'm not quite as radical as the last one. It's actually owned by the same person. I can went to the uh, chart below. But it's not gone too mad there. Still, quite well done. Yeah. He'd retain the original wheels. Only 500, V4. The original looking, and uh, again, looking, getting quite expensive now. I must say, I never liked them when, when they were new, I thought the RG was better. And uh, yeah, for the price, I'd rather have a big 1000cc inline four, I reckon. Behind it is a RD400, like my next building, except that one might be a slightly later model. Okay, we've got the YPVS version of the RD350, one of the later ones with a full fairing. I must say, it seems to have lost a little bit of the uh, looks of the original RDs, but I think that was the sort of last one they did really. We have an X5, that's 200. The X7 was a 250, which a lot of my mates had back in the day because it was a fast bike, a bit cheaper than the uh, RDs at the time. And uh, this is pretty original except for the fact that the engine's been painted and have had the wheels, they should really be bright white, they should be black with polished edges. That's me being a bit picky. Okay, let's see some more one-off bikes. We've got a three-wheeler here, it's a Yamaha, I guess, three-wheeler. It's got the NABD logo on it, that's the National Association of Disabled Bikers, charity who provide help for folks who have been disabled on bikes, get them back on a bike or a trike, and they help to pay for these adaptations or tracks, whatever. So, we actually have a massive big rally near me uh, in May, which hopefully I'll be able to go to uh, so show some support and also have a good time, hopefully. And here we have yet another Turbo Suzuki. It's time an earlier uh, GSX 1100. With later Jixa engine in it, Turbo, of course. Extend swing arm on the back, of course. Some nice wheels on it, looks like p &M wheels, I reckon. Uh, that sort of style. Very lightweight, a bit of a painted look to, to take care of though. And it's retaining the. Uh... Let's get back to that. Yeah, so extended swing arm, drag racer swing arm, rear sets, much modified, big block by the looks of it, big block, Jigsaw R engine, turbo on it. Looks nice, just retained the look of the original bike, you know, it's kept the uh, headlamp there and whatnot, even though. The clocks have now been replaced by a little clock there from um, oh, from Motor Gadget, I reckon, because my mate's got one just like it. Okay, and uh, next to it is another 
BFE, just come again with a jigsaw engine in it. Some other Suzuki's I guess. This is the Suzuki. Yeah, old school Suzuki. This is an RGV, another two-stroke. Again, very popular now. Beam frame, one of the first ones. Yeah. Now in the classic section, I reckon. Okay, so we're now at right the far end of the uh, event. So the uh, dog end as it were, so not much else now to see apart from the queue for toilets, uh, a few more smaller stands here, local bike clubs and so on, not much to see, we'll just have a look around one last time and see whether there's any interesting bikes to uh, film. I stumbled across this bike here, it's a Speedway bike from 57, I'm reading it here, it says it's a Farmer CC F1S uh, Speedway bike with a British Rotax Jap Speedway engine and the bike was built in Poland of all places. Very nice it is too. And uh, yeah, it's surprisingly quick as well, they're so light. And of course no brakes on Speedway. And over here we've got an ice racing bike. Look at them spikes on the uh, wheels. And then we've got some more, more modern Speedway bikes here. Let's just refocus. There's a more modern one. This one's got a Jawa engine. Again, 500cc Jawa engine. I guess it runs on dope, on mess, I'm not sure. I don't think it runs on petrol. And, uh, yeah. So, you never know what you're going to find if you're looking around a corner. So, yeah, all very interesting. There's even a, a sidecar outfit as well. It's like a Yamaha engine, something like an X or something like that. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's CC Yamaha engine sidecar speedway bike. Weird. Yeah, the Triumph Runners Club. These used to be full of old guys who kept their old Triumphs running despite leaks and whatever. Well, I guess now we've got the new Triumphs. Um, they've got a huge expanded potential club members. <coughs> And sure enough, and here we have all the new Triumphs. <coughs> These are all owner's bikes, I guess. Well, there's an old one though. New, old, new, new, new. Oh, an old one as well. Right at the end. It's a very nicely restored bike. And there are even some bikes for sale, but uh, this thing, whatever it is, <coughs> I think it might still to sell. Especially for uh, 2,495 quid. Yeah, I think we'll leave that one here. Stand here, this is quite an interesting bike, uh, a 1916 Model J F head or flathead, I guess. Harley. I suspect that's going to be a pure show bike these days. We've also got some smaller stuff. Got monkey bikes. There's a custom monkey bike. And there's a blinged out ST 70 monkey bike from uh, 1978. We got. And what else we got? We've also got some old Kawasaki's. Oh, an X75. That's a pretty rare bike these days. 750 Triumph. Just before they, uh, one of the first real custom bikes, I think, actually, are now worth a lot of money. Let's have, have a look at it. 75, pretty mint. Now worth an awful lot of money. And according to the sign below it, it says it's a 73 Hurricane, 450 of 1150 made. And um, only 40 said to be sold in this country, and this is one of them, so clearly quite a, a valuable bike, quite a rare bike. I must say I do like it. One of the very first real custom bikes built by a, a manufacturer. Okay, moving on then. Okay, and now the sublime, so ridiculous. This is a K1, I guess. K1000 BMW with some weird handmade frame. So it's a K75, it's a three cylinder, not, not four. Let's even read what it says. Yeah, yeah one off frame. 520 quid. Weird. But from that, we go to this a DB1 750, one of the first fully enclosed bikes ever built, really. Sports bikes, a bit like the old CBR 600. I think, I think this one came first. It runs a uh, Ducati 750 engine. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what's happened to the nuts and bolts there, but yeah. And then behind it is some horrible. Americanized color crap. You know, like Harley's, I don't like that. But yeah, that's a pretty rare bike. Very nice too.
supposed to be a 1970 CR 750 real race bike, but I don't think it is, I think it's a replica. Um, so I've seen that bike before, yes it's still for sale, it was for sale then. It's a good replica, but it's not a real one. Or at least, that's what I was told. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so here we have the new, or newish, Suxton R. Full fairing, 12 grand just over. And let's see it, I've not sat one before, so here we go. Okay, first impressions, knocking on those white coloured grips, but um, apart from that, yeah, the uh, clocks are nice, I like the polished top yoke, the uh, tank is quite slim, I like that, quite similar to my normal in fact, except mine's of course a real one, and what actually is surprising is, the pegs aren't that far back, and you see that there, the pegs are there, not at all far back at all, I'd say they were more standard than rear sets, and the lean forward, to the bars, which I was thinking could be really bad and extreme, it's not extreme at all um, compared to my Ducati Triple Eight or my Norley or my Guzzi. This this pack's bloody comfortable, so uh, that's quite interesting because I thought it would be a lot worse. Yeah, so uh, when I've read people saying, "Oh, you know, it's rig extreme, it's difficult to ride in traffic," I don't think so, mate. Not compared to the stuff I've got. So maybe this could be a potential bike for the future for me, um, but not in this colour. <laughs> Cream is not a good colour for the bike, I don't think. Anyway. I still like the uh, cup special over there, but uh, well, you can't have them all. You can't have them all. Okay, well, I'm getting a bit tired now. I've been here for a few hours and I uh, need to go home soon to take care of the dog, so I can't delay too far. But maybe I can get uh, a free cup of tea from these guys. Hammer and tongs at my local bike shop. But it's getting busy now, look. I see Sai's had a haircut specially. There he is with his new shaven head. I'll embarrass him. Okay, so here we are looking at Mike's Kawasaki H2, now tuned up. I'm told it now makes just shy of 300 brake horsepower. It's got some modified gears in the gearbox to raise the gear in, and it's got a kit to raise the pressure that the supercharger makes. So that's got to go on next, and that will take him well over 300 brake horsepower. It's also got a calm fiber body work throughout now. It's got these cool, super, super cool calm fiber wings. Bottom one, top one. And even more expensively, it's got calm fibre wheels, which I didn't realise at first. So there's the front one, and if we've got the back, you see it a bit better. Yes, there it is, calm fibre wheels, I'm not sure who makes them. Sai, what make these uh, wheels? What make are they? PST. PST. Yeah, look. Oh, well, yeah. There you go. Okay, yeah. hit it from me. Okay, so that looks pretty damn cool. And we've seen this bike on the dyno already. If you go on my channel, you can see it being dyno when it's brand new. And uh, maybe when it's uh, completed, we'll dyno it again. It's got a hell of a lot of high tech in it now. Far too complicated for me. But um, yeah, all good stuff. Okay, if you're interested, here's all the tech of the bike, all the mods so far. Hopefully, you can read that, you can focus okay. And it'll squeeze in on the other side, the mono arm, pro shifter on there. Full carbon intakes into the supercharger, and of course, the super cool wings, which is the best thing about it, of course. But now I'm thirsty, need a cup of tea, and it's time to go home and see the dog. So, thanks for watching, and cheers.